happened here is that Sakaguchi was recently interviewed by Fami2 about him playing Final Fantasy XIV and his thoughts on Final Fantasy XIV. If you have been following Sakaguchi on Twitter, uh, Sakaguchi's Twitter, as you can see here, has more or less turned into a Final Fantasy XIV fan account. Um, Again, I know myself, I, I blow you guys up about Final Fantasy XIV. I post about it all the time. Sakaguchi is the same way. Like, look at this. I'm still scrolling, still scrolling. We could just do this. Um, all we see is Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> you can scroll for forever and maybe you'll see one or two Final Fantasy uh, other things or Fantasian things, but it is almost all Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, I have been the same way. The game has really brought me back to when I was a kid. It, it made me feel those feelings again. I didn't think that was ever possible. Uh, Sakaguchi has did an interview recently with Famitsu, and he's kind of discussing uh, how he feels about the game. So this is what he's had to say thus far. Encounters with nostalgic characters. I knew that Chocobo was going to be in the game, Chocobos, um, but I was really surprised that it felt this nostalgic Logic, uh, when I encountered the monsters designed by Amano-san. Felt like the fat chocobo mounts and monsters all around the map, making me feel like I was at my first junior high and high school reunion. Oh man, that's awesome. The dot-drawn goblins had been transformed into CG with the mono's colors. I felt like I was giving these monsters a huge hug, all while slashing my way through their health gauges. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, there, there is a lot of appreciation for Amano's artwork in Final Fantasy XIV. And they, they have like an, a very specific appreciation for uh, Amano's artwork and trying to match his artwork in 3D. Appearance is very important in MMOs. It is also the way to show off strength of the weapons and armors you are wearing. I thought it was great that they used uh, Mirror Pre method to make it more fashionable. That might be the Japanese way they refer to glamour, I'm not sure. It satisfies both the performance and appearance needs of the game. When I got to a certain level, I got a shiny weapon from the market, mirror preemed, glammed it, we'll just say, then I wrapped myself in FF1 Amano-san's packaged armor that I got from the Crystal Tower. Looks very important. Then I congratulated everyone. Oh, there's a typo. It said, including Matsuno-san, it's saying, it's a miracle that you can get everyone, that you can get everything in two rounds. By the way, him and Matsuno actually play together, which is what's really cool. <laughs> Right? Matsuno also, as, as a good majority of you should know, also contributed the Ivalice raids. Matsuno has also contributed uh, a lot to Final Fantasy XIV's lore with Baja and other things. Uh, aside from just working on it, Matsuno is also just a really big fan of the game too. So again, it's just so cool to see all these people who contributed so much to Final Fantasy's like core identity, loving this game and loving the direction of the series and where it's going to go. Here's what he had to say about the scenery. It was just beautiful. For for example, I couldn't move an inch in the peach purple forest at Shadowbringer's starting point. I kept taking pictures, shaken by the beauty. I felt like it was a waste of time to take a step forward. Not only the grandeur of the natural terrain, but also the uniquely designed things for this world are excellent. The designers are doing the best job they can. Most recently, Ilmeg. In that fairy space, even the mounts seem to be assimilated into the world, enveloped in a nebulous spirit. I have to take my hat off to the originality and taste of the decorations, uh, such as the electric lights that look like flowers attached to cotton wool dandelions. The graphical tricks of the dungeons were also amazing. The dungeons are not only full of CG backgrounds, but also full of gimmicks that give a sense of surprise and attraction. In one battlefield, I felt as if I were a battle for uh, battlefield photographer as I love to take pictures of shells flying in the distance and parachutes falling. Wow, yeah. Um, Shadowbringers in particular, probably my favorite zones. I mean, I could go through the zones in Shadowbringers and so many of the areas there, and uh, you can just look around you and you can remember every single part of, of the thing that happened there. Like, you just you just know, like, you just, like, remember, like, oh, yeah, man, I remember when this cutscene happened or when this character moment happened. And every, every single location is just built with such a, a sense of purpose. Um, both for the moments for the characters to have their own revelations and for their arcs and for how those things lead into each other, but also for the world itself to basically uh, feel like a real world with real history behind it. And, uh, you know, I think that's the mark of good visual level design for any game, right? Is when you can kind of go around and you can really absorb uh, what happened here. What is this that I'm looking at? You know, how does this fit into the overarching story? And that's, that's how it feels with a lot of the zones, but especially the 
ones in Shadowbringers where that was just like, wow, okay. Here's what he had to say about the game. This is like pretty much overall, it seems. Uh, it took about eight years to create this game. I think he means from A Realm Reborn all the way through Shadowbringers, obviously. Uh, but not only because of the time it took, but also because of the sheer complexity and variety of the game, which showed the staff's obsession in a good way. The breadth and depth of the system is still not clear to me. Trust me, bro. Me and I... <laughs> Me neither. I'm still learning how to actually play effectively. Aren't we all, right? Of course, it's only been a month or so since I started playing, so that's to be expected. I mean, yeah, but you also beat the whole game in a month and uh, you went through like a good majority of like the side content too. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea how he, I mean, Jesus Christ, man, he, he got through Actually, I would say he's like way ahead of where I'm at in like a month, month and a half that he's been playing. He he has done way more than I have. Uh, I mean, he's completed Baja. He's he's leveled multiple jobs to the level cap. He's completed the story, did not skip cutscenes. He did all the raids. He did everything. <laughs> So, um, I don't think he's I don't know if he's done too many savages yet. Kind of like hard content. So maybe maybe he still hasn't touched any extreme savages ultimates. Uh, I think maybe that's a little bit of like what he's alluding to there about like understanding like the the combat mechanics more. Uh, it's only been a month or so since I started playing, so that's to be expected. I should be able to grasp the shape of the systems with my senses due to my profession, but it's still deep. It's so deep that I want to get into it. Let's go further and further. I'm sure that in another 30 years or so, Final Fantasy XIV's world will look like the Matrix. It will have assimilated, subliminated, <laughs> I, I don't know English. So he'll have subliminated into an uh, absolute virtual space. That's what I love here is Final Fantasy XIV will look like the Matrix. <laughs> His words, by the way, he wrote this in English. Because he wanted everyone to like just kind of know like his general thoughts. This is this is just funny though that he was saying that yeah, in 30 years this game is gonna be the f matrix. <laughs> he envisioned FF11 like way back, right? I I think to him this looks like the the version of the thing that he saw in his head when he first conceived the idea of Final Fantasy going online. Here's what he's had to say about flying, which by the way I actually really love flying in this game. I think that flying is just part of Final Fantasy to me, right? There's just some sort of freedom that you get in flying. And uh, I hope that Final Fantasy 16 has flying. There's just, it's just like the ultimate freedom unlocking when you get the airship or whenever you get that, that ability to fly. It's just great. Um, here's what he had to say about flying in the game. The best moment for me was when I soared into the sky with my chocobo. Of course, I was also impressed when I got my own chocobo or when I cleared a dungeon or a raid for the first time. But among them, the first time I flew was badass. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just so awesome to hear like Sakaguchi, like in his own words, like playing a, like a new Final Fantasy game and just having a, hey, this is kind of badass moment. <laughs> When you enter a new world, you have the complete win vein quest. That is uh, the Japanese term for it, but obviously in English, the English term for it is the ether currents. Albeit a bit tedious, lol. E ether currents can be a bit tedious, true. Uh, but they're not bad. And especially when you compare it to like flying in like World of Warcraft or something like that. They're fun. And uh, you know, Aether Currents, you can also discover like a lot of parts of the world, a lot of landmarks and things like that. And a lot of, uh, again, going back to the visual storytelling that's in the game, you can kind of discover that like while you're doing your Aether Currents uh, in a way that you normally would not discover it. So um, I, I've grown like a real sense of appreciation for Aether Currents and like what they do there and how they get you to kind of uh, go through a zone in a way that you wouldn't. So you will experience the pleasure of flying over the land you have been running around on many times. And every time I do, I'm amazed at the changes in scenery I see from the from high in the sky. I'm moved by how much more beautiful and different it looks. Flying is wonderful. Flying really is wonderful. It, it's it's a great part of Final Fantasy. Like one of my favorite things about this game is how you can be flying in the air and then you can just like literally go from flying and you could die 
dive underwater and continue to ride on your mount like as you explore underwater and doing stuff like that it's just really cool it's just really well done um i hope that chocobos will fly in final fantasy 16 and if they don't then i hope that we will at least have some kind of airship i know on a technical side it's extremely hard to do nowadays to do like a like open world thing where you can actually fly around on an airship but if we can get some type of flight final fantasy 16 that'd be awesome uh that's so nice and respectful of sakaguchi seems like he's having a lot of fun being on the fan side now instead of the producer side yeah he is and i i know that you know sakaguchi has expressed his disappointment final fantasy um after he left on um a couple of occasions and uh it's good to see he's enjoying what's happening with it again <laughs> Enjoying is a vast understatement. Enjoying is a vast understatement. Um, because look at this. I mean, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Dude, you can keep scrolling for forever. You can keep scrolling for forever. Like, look, I'm scrolling faster than it will load in my browser. And I still, I can't even get back to like when he was playing, like, dude, I can't even get back to the beginning of the month because he he's posts so much about Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> Um, yeah, he, he is promoting uh, FF14 more than he, than he did Fantasian. Yeah, it's, it's actually funny. Like if you scroll, like you'll come across like one or two Fantasian things and then it just goes right back to Final Fantasy 14. <laughs> it just goes right back. <laughs> He is, he is very, very much in high approval. Recently, there have been a lot of theme park areas dedicated to video games, and I've been looking at them from the side, feeling a little jealous. Right around then, I entered the world of Final Fantasy XIV. It was nothing short of an FF theme park. I met Amano's characters, flew across the sky on a chocobo, adventures, and fought with other players who visited this world. It's wonderful. This was a true theme park. This was a true game theme park, and FF had already gotten the best of both worlds. I realized there was no need to be envious at all. I'd like to thank the staff who created this world. Their eight years of sincere effort and their abundant, abundant talent. Abundant. I'm so stupid. And their abundant talent. I told you I can't speak English. I was like, the f***? <laughs> abundant. <laughs> Their abundant talent. This is an amazing world. It's a full theme park of FF. The Final Fantasy has become the final reality in virtual world. For the moment, he's not really working on anything. He's kind of teased. Maybe he would want to work on something in the future. He's also thrown out that he would be interested in doing a collaborative event with Naoki Yoshida, right? So uh, during the panel that he had with Yoshida, he had expressed interest in writing some side quests for Final Fantasy 16. Wouldn't that be awesome? Uh, Yoshida kind of had to decline him because uh, they were a little too far into Final Fantasy 16's development in order for them to do that. With the game sounding fairly finished, actually, which is weird because they haven't shown off much, but Yoshida is the type of man who is not going to show off until he feels like it is absolutely ready. He's the type of guy who's not going to show off anything until he feels like he's basically showing you a finished product. And that's for the better. Square has made the mistake of showing off partially completed games that change their idea um, radically right in the middle of development because they'll basically announce a game when it's only been worked on for a few months to a year and so many things are subjected to change in that time and uh, you know they they talk interviews and when they're talking interviews they aren't even talking about firm ideas like that are actually implemented or have actually been decided on that they are actually going to implement they're just things that they want to do or ideas that they vaguely sort of imagine, you know, as one would when they first start a project. And then, you know, this causes so much uh, confusion, so much dissonance between, uh, you know, the consumers and, you know, the business themselves and what they're actually expecting and what ends up being developed. Uh, we saw that quite a lot with Final Fantasy 15. To some degree, we saw that with Final Fantasy 7 Remake with that game being announced so early and then um, so many issues happening behind the scenes with Cyber Connect 2 and uh, all the other things that had to change behind the scenes and we don't even know how long that ended up delaying the game or what impact that had on Final Fantasy 7 Remake and its development and release schedules so y Yoshida is taking a different approach and he is not going to show off 16 until 16 is a damn near finished game and that is the right approach to take for Final Fantasy 16. It is absolutely the right approach. You know, one of the things about Yoshida is that he often says, like whenever he's talking about this stuff, he'll he'll often just straight up say, 
you know what? I'm probably going to get in trouble for this because I'm just going to be honest about what the actual situation is. <laughs> you know, that made me gain so much respect for him. You know, right? Like, um, we talk about like, man, I wish Final Fantasy 16 showed up at Tokyo Game Show, for example. But, you know, it's not like he didn't straight up say like, no, we don't want to show it off. At, I, I don't want to show it off at Tokyo Game Show. Square Enix Corporate wants me to show it off at Tokyo Game Show. And they're putting a lot of pressure on me to do it. I don't think the game's ready. <laughs> And uh, yeah, the, the honesty and transparency uh, really does foster this sense of trust. Like, I, I feel like I trust what he's saying. And uh, I know that sounds like a, it may sound like the, the baseline for like, or like the, like the base level for what you should expect for like the bottom line. I think that's the word I'm looking for, for what you should expect from a big developer, right? Or from anyone. But uh, it, it, it always, it hasn't always been. And it's nice that he makes such an effort it is it is just awesome to see sakaguchi this into final fantasy 14 to see the passion for this franchise reignited to see that uh he can also retire and continue to enjoy final fantasy and you know i i feel the same way you know for me i was really i, I just didn't know how to feel about final fantasy for a while um, you know, Final Fantasy 13 came out and that game, <laughs> you know, I, I imported it from Japan to play it early. I was so excited for Final Fantasy 13 and, uh, you know, it left me with a, a sense of disappointment after playing it like many people do feel. Uh, I, I played Final Fantasy 15. Uh, we, we ended up in a very similar spot after 13. And uh, boy, I remember I remember beating Final Fantasy 15. And I remember thinking, oh my God, is that it? Is, is that really it? Is that really, <laughs> is that really all? And uh, sure enough, that was that was everything. So the thing. And uh, it just it was just in incredibly uh, underwhelming. Right. And then again, I, I am obviously in the vast minority on this one. But uh, I, I did like Final Fantasy VII Remake. I thought it was, you know, a, a decent video game for sure. But uh, as you guys know, I just was not a very big fan of the story direction that they're going in with it. I, I just don't feel like it's a very good idea, if I'm to be frank. And so I was really disappointed that they were going to be going in that direction and uh, uh, going with the the Arbiters and the remake sequel stuff. I know that many of you are are very excited for that thing and I am not going to uh, Rob that excitement from you take that excitement from you if if you think that is like awesome You know more power to you. That's just my personal feeling is that uh, I really uh, not a fan of that personal direction Even though I do think it is a pretty decent video game uh, But uh, the story stuff they're doing is not for me personally so, you know, 2020, I was at like an extreme low with Final Fantasy. I thought that Final Fantasy that I personally knew and what I personally uh, seek value in for Final Fantasy, I thought that was over with. I thought that, you know, that was just not the thing anymore. And that was really hard for me. It was really hard for me because Final Fantasy has been part of my life, my whole life. Uh, it, it has always been the place I call home and to feel like the place I call home was sort of, you know, lifted out from under me was a terrible feeling. It really sucked. I'm not going to lie to you. It was it was awful. And, you know, and I know it's just video games, but it's also more than just video games in a way. It's also community and, um, you know, sharing high moments with other people and, you know, even sharing the lows, too. And so I almost wondered, you know, maybe I've grown this way and the franchise grew this way and it's just no longer for me it's no longer for who i am personally and then that's where i was it was it was a very low point kind of depressing to be honest it was very depressing really i just thought that like you know th this thing that i held dear this thing that i loved was never going to quite be uh the same again or maybe not even the same but recapture the same feelings that it captured and then <laughs> Um, I had uh, after that I had so many people that were telling me you need to try Final Fantasy 14 I know you played it for a little while back when a realm reborn first came out And I know you played Final Fantasy 14 1.0, but I know you need to try Final Fantasy 14 in its current state You need to try it as it is now and you are going to like absolutely love it when you get when you play through Heaven's Ward and and Stormblood and Shadowbringers those stories are, are really the thing that you're looking for Please do it. I had so so many people telling me this and 
My thoughts always were, it's an MMO. I don't want to play an MMO. I, I just don't want to do it. I'm just not interested in it. It's just, it's not for me. I don't understand how an MMO RPG could tell a story that's compelling and bring me into like the same type of moments that I had experienced with classic Final Fantasy and, and fall in love with with characters like who who falls in love with characters in an MMORPG and and who who plays an MMORPG like loving the music and and loving the the atmosphere the story and 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 all these sorts of things, right? No, no, no. You you play it, you skip the story, and you go straight to the the raids and the end game content. That's what you do, right? I didn't even think it was possible. I, I legitimately did not think it was possible to even tell a good story in an MMORPG. I, I thought that was you know completely bonkers. And, and to be fair, that kind of was, <laughs> that kind of is largely true outside of Final Fantasy XIV. But it's because Yoshida's philosophy that this is a Final Fantasy game first. This is an RPG and it's an MMO RPG second. It fills me with the reason I started. When I started, you know, I was just filled with this love and passion for Final Fantasy. I was. I was filled with um, this desire um, create for this series that I loved. And be being part of Final Fantasy meant the whole world to me. Um, there was no other game series that I really wanted to talk about quite like this one and express, you know, quite like this one. And so, uh, you know, when I was lost in, in those moments, moments uh, when, you know, the world was already going to crap <laughs> as it was. And, uh, you know, just how how dark of a time it, it felt. And I started playing 14 again. And at first I was kind of like, this is OK. You know, I was going through like the post of Realm Reborn content. I was like, this is OK. This is all right. Like it's 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 good, but it's not like you know people are telling me this is the best Final Fantasy. I don't, I'm like I don't know about that. I get through Heaven's Word, you know, and there there are some really touching moments there that I'm like, oh okay, this is the kind of story I have not seen from this this series in a really long time. This is good, like not just good. This is like damn good. This is like top five good. So I was like, okay, how how much better can it get? So I play through Stormblood, playing Stormblood, meeting characters like Yotsu and having an epic uh, Dragon Ball Z fight with Xenos. I'm feeling it. I'm like, wow, this is great. This is so great. I'm so into this. You know, this is about the human experience in a fantasy world. And I am really connecting to this. So I'm like, okay, this is like maybe like a, a top three Final Fantasy for me. Um, Not necessarily Stormblood in particular, but it ele Stormblood and its post content elevated Final Fantasy 14. It's like a top three. Um, oh, And I, I really did like Stormblood, obviously, as you guys know. Then I got to Shadowbringers. This is the one. I mean, <laughs> if you if you ever stream Final Fantasy 14, what happens when you stream Final Fantasy 14 is this. Oh, you thought that was good? Wait till you get to Shadowbringers. <laughs> That's what they tell you. Wait till you get to Shadowbringers. You think all oh, this is good? You think this is good? Wait for Shadowbringers. And uh, there's a reason. There is a reason. You get to Shadowbringers and um, not only is Shadowbringers a good tale on its own right, it's the culmination of everything that has led you this far. It, it's it's everything coming together and coming together in such a beautiful way. And it just makes you feel these things that, uh, you know, have not felt in a while from the series. And there were just moments that obviously I don't want to spoil, but things like, you know, going up Mount Gulg and, and fighting who's up there, wink, wink, and doing things like that. And characters like the Exarch and Lena and Emmett Selk and all, all the characters in Shadowbringers and all all of those characters the music the music man I mean I don't I don't think the music has ever been bad in Final Fantasy I, I think the music and even in 13 and 15 still really good music um really great music even but the music in 14 especially Shadowbringers OSD was just elevated to like this insane level to me it was Soken has just this style where it, it is just like nothing else it's like nothing else and I had to realize this is probably my favorite Final Fantasy game of all time. And uh, that was really weird because I didn't think that there would ever be a Final Fantasy that would ever be something that I could call my favorite. I, I thought that was over. I, I thought that was done. I thought that, you know, Final Fantasy VII original, which was my favorite before that. I, I thought that was the peak of the franchise. Nothing will ever recapture that. Uh, the best we can hope for is Final Fantasy games that are good going forward and can be uh, used in the same light, but it would never be the same. 
And this is the first time that I played a Final Fantasy, even, if, you know, one through 10, that I played a Final Fantasy with the Shadowbringers. And I said, dude, this is the best. This, this, is, this is the best of this thing that I have been obsessed with. This is it. This is the pinnacle, the peak. The climax this is it this is the thing and uh i just never thought i'd have that feeling again i never thought i'd have that feeling again ever i did not think anything could do that i did not think anything could be that again and sure enough here we are uh talking about final fantasy 14 and uh it being my favorite ff of all time and it reigniting that same feeling and not just me but the creator of the franchise how much joy it gives him i mean look at this look at this <laughs> look at this it just keeps going forever and ever 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 to know it wasn't just me feeling that way you know, the father of the series is also feeling that way. And the father of the series is also having, you know, that rebirth, that passion again. You know, uh, the, the Creative Business Unit 3 logo is, it's a visual pun. It's, it's a chocobo and a phoenix, right? And to me, what that represents is that it represents sort of a rebirth of Final Fantasy. It represents so many things. It represents rising from the ashes. And I feel like that is what 14 is. It is kind of like Final Fantasy reborn in a way and not just final fantasy 14 honestly but it's really a rebirth for the final fantasy franchise it's a rebirth for for everyone for every it's great i could not be more passionate about the game and where it's gone and seeing that hironobu sakaguchi the man who started all of this the man that is the reason you all are watching this video right now or the stream and the reason uh i'm even talking right now this is validating bro this is awesome I, I love this.